In last video, we have seen how to create a partition and clustering table. In this video, we are going to talk in detail about partitioning and clustering. So in BigQuery, when you create a partition table, you can choose between a time unit column, ingestion time, or an integer range partitioning. When using a time unit or ingestion time, you can select between daily, hourly, monthly, or yearly. Generally, daily is a default one and is a good way to start. The data is generally medium size and it's distributed evenly across different days. You will choose an hourly partition in case you have a huge amount of data coming in and you want to process your data based upon each hour. When you are using hourly partition, you might want to consider the number of partitions which will be created. BigQuery limits us to create number of partitions till 4000. So in case you are using an hourly partition, you might want to have an expire uh, partitioning strategy. When using monthly or yearly partition, you will generally have small amount of data. And but these data's, data is uh, across different ranges. When doing clustering in BigQuery, the columns you specify to cluster are co-located. The order of the column is really important because this is the order which specifies the sort order of the data. So for example, if you are clustering on column A, B, C, the sort order would be starting from column A, so your table would be sorted first on column A, then on column B, and then on column C. Clustering generally improves your filter and aggregate queries, especially if you are using the filter or aggregate on, on the columns which you have clustered. Obviously, if your data size is less, let's assume less than one gigabyte, partitioning and clustering both does, don't really show any improvements in your query performance. Actually, they add uh, significant cost because uh, partitioning and clustering tables incur metadata reads and metadata maintenance. So it would be, it might make more sense to have no clustering or partitioning for tables with less amount of data. In your clustering table, you can specify up to four clustering columns. The clustering columns must be top level and non-repeated columns. You can choose between these types for your clustering columns. So it can be of date, boolean, geography, int, numeric, string, and date times. Now let's compare between partitioning and clustering. There might be scenarios when you might want to choose between one of them or choose both of them. So it's important to know what are the different uh, criteria for choosing clustering and partitioning and when clustering might be a better option than partitioning. So in clustering, the cost benefits are unknown. Whereas in partitioning, the cost benefits are known upfront. So if it's really important for you to maintain uh, your queries uh, in, a, in a particular amount of cost, then partitioning becomes really important. While running queries in BigQuery, you can specify that if your cost exceeds X amount for this particular query, then do not execute it. These kind of things would not be possible if you just cluster your table. You would have to use partitioning to know these upfront costs. A clustering is better to use when you need more granularity, which partitioning cannot really provide. In partitioning, you can do partition level management, for example, deleting partitions uh, or creating new partitions or moving partitions uh, between storage. And these things are not possible in clustering. Generally in clustering, you will query or filter your data or aggregate your data based upon multiple columns. Whereas in partitioning, you generally filter or aggregate on a single column because partitioning is only possible on one column. You will also use clustering when the cardinality of the number of values in a column or group of columns is large. This becomes a hindrance in partitioning because there is a limitation of 4,000 partitions per table. 
Now let's look into when will you choose clustering over partitioning. You will use clustering when the partition results into a small amount of data per partition, approximately less than one gigabytes. So if your partitions are really small or your column has a high amount of granularity, then using clustering makes more sense. Obviously, clustering would be used if partitioning results in large number of partitions beyond the limit of the partition table, which is 4,000. And obviously, if you will also use clustering if your partitioning uh, results in a lot of modifications of uh, a lot of partitions in the table, and those though and that too at a very frequent rate. So, for example, if you are querying every hour or you are writing data to your BigQuery table every hour and that modifies uh, all your partitions, then that might not be a good idea. Now let's take a look on automatic reclustering by BigQuery. And this is a very important feature. As data is added to your cluster table, generally the newly inserted data are written into different blocks which obviously does not overlap with your clustering strategy. These overlapping key ranges generally weaken the sort property of the table, can increase your query time. To maintain the performance characteristic of a cluster table, BigQuery performs auto reclustering. This is done in the background, so you generally don't realize this and it does not impact your query performance. And for partition table, clustering is maintained for data within the scope of each partition. And this is also handled in the automatic reclustering. And another very important part of automatic reclustering is that it doesn't cost the end user anything. It's done on, in the background by BigQuery itself, and it has no cost at all. In this video, we have seen partitioning and clustering. We have learned about when to use clustering over partitioning or partitioning over clustering. What are the different criteria for choosing clustering or partitioning? And what is automatic reclustering? I guess this is a good stop to think about partitioning and clustering based upon the taxi data set. Let's all take a minute to think about different partitioning and clustering columns. Why don't you put that into the comment section with the use case you are tackling and what kind of partitioning and clustering columns will you use?